Okay, well that's a rather provocative title for a uh, YouTube video. Um, it was a while ago, of course, there was a nuclear incident in Japan, and uh, I was having an interesting conversation with one of my friends who was uh, buying a car, and he uh, had checked to make sure the car, which was uh, made actually in Japan, uh, was made uh, before the uh, Fukushima incident, which is kind of an interesting uh, observation. Um, we were talking, and uh, he speculated that cars coming from Japan are slightly more radioactive now. And uh, it, was, uh, it was an interesting conversation, but of course the only way to really prove that uh, would be with a, a Geiger counter. Uh, now, Geiger counters are relatively expensive items, and for idle speculation, uh, spending a couple thousand dollars uh, wouldn't be a, a great use of money. However, um, the, uh, of course the nuclear incident in Fukushima uh, actually uh, caused one company in Japan to uh, produce a series of uh, Geiger counters, or um, dosimeters, which are... Uh, uh, priced uh, very much at uh, uh, personal use. Uh, this unit here, um, using a little bit of um, English uh, air counter, uh, it's uh, obviously meant for the Japanese domestic market, entirely uh, documented with uh, 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 Japanese language. Uh, but uh, it's targeted uh, for uh, use in measuring uh, gamma radiation at a, a plus or minus 20%, I think was the meter spec. Uh, so, anyways, um, so this video is all about, of course, uh, just looking at this little unit here, which is kind of neat uh, by itself. I'll tear it down now at the end of the video. Uh, but uh, to come back to the original speculation uh, my friend had, uh, whether or not uh, cars are more radioactive, um, we'll take it out and take a look at it. Okay, so here's the unit. Uh, it's very simple, obviously. You can see it's very hand-sized. Uh, it only has a single button. Uh, if you turn it on, it then goes through an integration cycle looking for a, a gamma. Uh, events and uh, it records it. No, obviously uh, not a lot of nuclear uh, activity in my lab. It always defaults to a 0 0.05, I guess, just to remind you that there's always background radiation uh, in the world. Now, I don't have a lot of uh, radioactive things in my household. Uh, I'm too young to have things like watches with uh, glowing radioactive dials. However, I do have a, a smoke detector. And, of course, smoke detectors use ionizing radiation to uh, detect um, uh, uh, smoke. Uh, you can see the meter is now counting a bit higher, and there's a little black indicator here which actually records whenever a, a gamma event occurs. Uh, obviously, we're talking about you know, several counts per minute. This is a very small amount of radiation, uh, but it's a good proof that the meter uh, does actually seem to be able to record these events and uh, provides a reliable indication of um, when they occur. So, okay, well, so here's a, a little inset map of Japan. Uh, Fukushima is here. Uh, this is the Fukushima pre Prefecture. Um, and there are, of course, car plants in Japan, and uh, they do ship into North America. Um, this test only makes sense trying to look at vehicles who actually come from Japan. Uh, the first thing you have to do, of course, is look at the VIN number of the car. The first letter, here's an inset of a, a car. Uh, the first letter will be a J if it's Japanese, uh, and obviously 2011. So um, was going around basically recording all the vehicles in uh, my neighborhood, uh, looking for basically both uh, older cars, which were not Japanese, older cars, which were Japanese, the manufacturer, and then, of course, uh, seeing if there was any statistically meaningful radioactivity on a car that was uh, coming out in uh, 2011 uh, or later, which came from a plant which uh, is close to the uh, Fukushima incident. Okay, well, in terms of methodology, I just uh, put the uh, sensor uh, near the uh, hood of the cars because that's obviously where the engine block is. And uh, you, of course, have the greatest mass of metal there. I walked around... Uh, Look at the cars and uh, record the measurements. Uh, if the recording was above uh, ambient, uh, I often would retake the measurement just to make sure. Um, no, it's all over the place. I mean, for example, uh, one of the highest cars I measured was actually a, a mini car, which is from England. Um, but I measured around uh, 26 cars, and uh, here I'll just inset the um, number of cars were over. Now, both cars made in Japan and cars made out of Japan, of course, have counts above ambient. Not a huge surprise. We're measuring some incredibly uh, low amounts of radiation here. Uh, but interestingly enough, there's actually, on this very small sample set, a small bias uh, which suggests that cars with VINs of J and manufacturing dates uh, greater than 2012 uh, have a slightly higher bias towards being radioactive. So, how curious. Okay, um, I think I'll uh, keep this little gadget in my pocket, actually, and uh, measure some more things. It's definitely a little fun bit of amateur science. Uh, let's take a uh, tear down this thing. Let's see how they made it. Uh, just before we tear it down, uh, let's take a look at the company, actually. It's kind of interesting. Um, I guess their name transliterates to ST Corporation. Uh, here's their uh, top web page. Uh, they're a company which appears to be mostly uh, involved in uh, air fresheners, if you can imagine. 
Uh, but of course, necessity is mother invention, and uh, clearly there's probably a pretty significant concern in Japan. And uh, this company's come up with a counter. And as you can see, here's a, here's their annual report from 2012. Uh, they obviously worked with um, somebody from uh, Tokyo University to come up with this really cost-effective uh, sensor. Um, and obviously, you can see here from the number of units they sold, uh, was that 260,000? Uh, they've obviously hit a significant market need. Okay, the units opened up obviously into two shells. It was a, a couple of uh, triple A's to power it. Uh, the first nice thing you see actually in the assembly is a series of uh, test pads. Uh, this is for, of course, uh, manufacturing test. Now, the manual indicates the sensor's under this uh, piece of uh, black plastic, so uh, we'll uh, keep on going and take off the uh, white top. Okay, there's a little LCD and just lifts off. And uh, on the top here, it looks like it's a uh, Atmel microprocessor. Not surprising, small microcontroller, a bit of power supply, uh, probably crystal down here. Put the sensor's uh, soldered on, so I'm going to need to uh, remove it with a soldering iron. And uh, here's the sensor array module. Looks like it's been uh, completely enclosed by two metal shields. I don't want to go any further because I want to uh, continue to use this. Kind of an interesting gadget, actually, now that I'm sort of getting some preliminary evidence that um, it's worth it looking at this uh, phenomenon a bit further. Uh, I think I'll uh, put a slip this in my pocket and do some more measurements. So, there we go. Uh, a real interesting bit of testing equipment. Uh, snagged it off eBay, about $60.